get that out of the way, let's go right ahead and talk about Shaq and how he was unimpressed after the Olympics. Now, if there's any, you know, former NBA player that completely dislikes most of the NBA players in today's NBA now, it's probably going to be Shaq. Like, the only player that we know that Shaq really likes is Steph Curry and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And he really likes Giannis partly because Giannis reminds him of himself being, you know, that very dominant force in the paint that no one can stop regardless of, you know, who's in the paint. And aside from, you know, those two, Shaq doesn't really like that many players in the, in the NBA. He doesn't like Rudy Gobert. He doesn't like Joel Embiid. Um, he actually he likes Jokic, now that I think about it, but it's like you have to be completely insane if you don't like Jokic. But aside from that, he doesn't really have that many people that he likes watching in the league. And, you know, him saying that he's not really impressed with the United States and them winning the gold medal isn't really that surprising considering, you know, his strong dislikes towards a lot of NBA players. And so when the Dream Team completely annihilated opponents by the average margin of 44 points in 1992 in Barcelona, only 22 active or former NBA players were on, you know, an Olympic squad that wasn't the United States. So the United States, a team full loaded with in NBA players in 92, was going up against, you know, such weak competition and so many other countries that were just, you know, lacking in terms of NBA level talent. And when the Paris Olympics ended up happening, the United States, they ended up beating teams by an average margin of 19 points. And when you look at it that way, you would think that like, okay, the dream team, you know, they were a much more dominant team when you look at the average margin of victory. But you also have to understand that the United States in 2024 were going up against 69 active or former NBA players in the 11 countries that they represented. So even a six-year-old kid could um, deal more competition, including a three-time reigning MB NBA MVP and future MVP um, had a more challenging path to the gold medal. So Shaq was, you know, for some reason, least impressed by the exploits of LeBron in Paris, mainly because he disagrees with the world getting close and catching Team USA in the, you know, in the Olympics and in international play. So Shaq told, um, you know, he was talking on the big podcast, he was saying, I have a dominant personality. I don't care who you are. My cousin Kenny just had this argument upstairs. He said the world is getting close, but I don't think it is. The fact that they, Team USA, went 97-95 in the semifinal, you only beat South Sudan by one. Come on, that's never supposed to happen. So, you know, he's on the side of, you know, believing that Team USA should have won by a much larger margin of victory as opposed to the margin of victory that they that they won by against all of those teams. Now, you know, I was a little disappointed at the fact that they didn't win by so many points in a couple of those games, but it doesn't matter at the end, you know, how many points you win by as long as you win. So I'm not really, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not really losing that much sleep at the end of the fact that, oh, the United States almost ended up losing to Serbia because, you know, while that was true, they didn't. So there's no real there's no real need to like lose that much sleep over the fact that the game was close. Like so what that the game was close. And you know, Shaq is just one of those people that just doesn't like the fact that they 
score was close considering how you know he played in an era and he grew up watching an era where the United States was just so much better at basketball than every other country that they went up against and you know it's just uncharacteristic for the United States to lose in a sport as popular in their country as basketball and you know in fairness to Steve Kerr's team, the one-point win over South Sudan was an exhibition game, and they beat the African team by 17 points in the actual Olympic tournament. So the semifinal game against Nikola Jokic's Serbia also saw Team USA um, be able to mount a ridiculous comeback and win in the close game and against a team that's you know full of NBA talent you know aside from Nikola Jokic there was also um, Bogdan and several other players on the team that have NBA that had NBA experience well there's only like you know two other players on the team that have had that but aside from that it was like it was a pretty competent team and they ended up winning they ended up winning this, the bronze medal, which is, you know, a, a third place medal is better than not getting a medal at all because, you know, Germany and Canada, two of the teams that were considered to be one of the, like, favorites to win or be in the competing race for a medal, they both ended up getting leaving with nothing. So the um, the fact that the Serbian team ended up getting a medal is just, you know, impressive in of itself. And, you know, they had to contend with, um, in the finals, they had to contend with Victor Wembenyama, who's, like, already made a name for himself in the NBA. And he's the kind of player that no other person or NBA player has seen in their entire life. And... He's arguably, like, one of the most difficult opponents that Team USA has ever had to face. Because, I mean, let's face it, like, there's no other team that has had a player as tall and as versatile as Victor on their team in the Olympics. And regardless of where Shaq stands, it can't be denied that the world hasn't caught up in the, you know, the race for being a good basketball team and in the race um, against the United States and in the, you know, sort of competition between the United States and the rest of the world. So Shaq won only one Olympic gold medal as part of the Dream Team Part 3 in 1996 in the Atlanta games so you know he he also played in an era where the United States just com completely dominated the other team so it makes sense how he would like you know think that this is how the United States are supposed to play and you're not supposed to have a close game whatsoever when you are the United States team so you know it makes sense at least he like at least he's able to back up his talk and he's not just, you know, talking just to talk. So that's it for the first segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the second segment where I talk about some future NBA stars, like, you know, players who I think have a chance of being the face of the league. Now, again, this is, you know, this is my list. So this is you know, this is mainly my opinion. I'm mostly giving my opinions. If you think I missed a player, then let me know in the comments who you guys think I missed. So I'm just, I just wanted to let everybody know that before I go for a break in this segment, and I'll go ahead and restate it again in the sec second segment. So I will be right back. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Everybody in the world blind Please Lord give me a sign A sign 
to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose it fits, I'm losing shit, a stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip, you choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift, oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind, is everybody in the world blind, please Lord give me a sign, a sign, I feel like I'm losing my mind.